الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله i thought because this is the shar mubarak shar anzala fihi quran this is the month the holy month of ramadan where this blessed month the quran was revealed so that it might be beneficial for us to take some very tafsir mukhtasara and i want to read from a very fantastic book and especially if those who have the uh, ability who have uh, arabic language and who have the means or the ability to obtain this book it's a very fantastic book it's from the tafsir center for quranic studies uh, markaz tafsir li darasat al qur'aniya and it's called mukhtasar fi tafsir it's fantastic it was uh, compiled or a group of scholars a big com- community of scholars in fact i believe from all over the muslim world came together to make this very simplified tafsir so we're going to go through surah al-kafirun in a very brief sitting but it will be beneficial bi idnillah something you can sit with the family Uh, and benefit uh, just for a very brief uh, simplified understanding of the surah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul ya ayyuhal kafirun la a'budu ma ta'budun wa la antum 'abiduna ma a'bud ولا انا عابد ما عبدتم ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين الله سبحانه وتعالى says after بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا ايها الكافرون say so this is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is addressed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, addressing uh, addressing him to say to the disbelievers to the pagans of Quraysh ya ayyul kafirun o oh, you disbelievers la abudu ma ta'budun i don't worship that which you worship and you nor do you worship that which i worship and i will not worship what you worship nor will you worship that which i worship for you is your religion and me be mine they mention the mufassirin here maqsud as-sura what is the the intention behind the sura or the the subject of the sura tarakkiz ala takrir tawhid al-ibadah wa bara'a min shirk wa tamayiz tam وتمايز التام بين الاسلام والشرك so this surah here surah al-kafirun is one of those surahs that affirms the qaida or the principle of al-wala wal bara of loving and disavowing or hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this surah as they mention emphasizes tawhid al-ibadah tawhid al-ibadah and tawhid al-ibadah is what tawhid al-uluhiyya this refers to the tawhid the the concept of tawhid or the part of tawhid which is the servants devoting all of their worship to Allah azza wa jalla So this tawhid has to do with af'al ibad uh, uh, ubad or uh, ibad. This is the has to do with the actions of the servant. When we talk about tawhid al-uluhiyya, this is the concept of us worshiping Allah alone. Those people who worship Allah azza wa jalla devoting all acts of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's tawhid al-ibadah. 
Tawheed Arububiyah has to do with the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, his attributes of lordship, of him being the lord of, of everything, him being the creator of everything, him being the provider and sustainer of everything. That's Rububiya. And then Al Asma'i Sifat also has to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his divine names and attributes. That he is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Bismillah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. So those are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. Allah has complete mercy and He's the most beneficent and the most merciful and no mercy of His creatures, although His creatures contain mercy, the mother has mercy for her children, the father even has mercy for his children, but not like the mother's mercy. That mercy is unlike the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no comparison between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there, uh, there is nothing like him and he is the all hearing all seeing meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes he's divine attributes of hearing and seeing he's the all hearing and all seeing I hear you hear we see you see but our hearing and seeing is not like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the aqid of Ahl sunnah this is how we differ the Asharis and those other groups who say that Ahl sunnah is mujassima they say that Ahl sunnah uh, makes Allah uh, like his creation or make tishbi or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that, that Ahl sunnah uh, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a body like ours la abadin we don't say this these are lies vicious lies and wallahi yawm al will get our haq from those evil statements from the people's evil statements about us. So this surah, this surah emphasized Tawheed al-Ibadah and that the distancing or disavowal of shirk in the people of shirk in totality. And this is why some of the ulama, they, when they define Islam, we don't say Islam is just peace through submission. This is a, a general English uh, translation and concept of Islam. But many of the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, when they make reference to Islam, and especially the uh, Imit uh, Dawah, they refer to Islam as uh, Al Islam is Islam lillah uh, is Islam lillah bi tawhid wal inqiyad lahu wa inqiyad lahu bi ta'a wa khulus min shirk wa ahli wa ahliha that Islam is submitting in total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the Islam lillah bi tawheed, in tawheed with Islamic monotheism. And leaving off shirk, totally leaving shirk and the people of shirk. So that we distance ourselves from the customs and from the ways of people who do not worship Allah Because our custom is Islam. Our custom is Tawheed, is that we believe in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We don't share partners with Him. And going back to the surah, so going uh, to this very simple tafsir, Kul ya Rusul. So the first ayat is addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and for him to say to the mushrikeen of Quraysh that, O oh, you disbelievers, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's addressing, the Prophet sallallahu is addressing the disbelievers. La a'budu fi al-hali wa la fi mustaqbal ma ta'buduna min al-islam. That I don't worship now, currently, at this present time, those uh, idols that you worship. Nor will I worship those idols in the future. وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُهُ أَنَا وَهُوَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ Nor do you worship that which I worship and, it, and, and, and that is Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُهُ أَنَا وَهُوَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ وَلَا أَنَا أَعْبُدُ, أعبد مَا 
ba'tum min al-islam nor do I worship, nor am I a worshiper of those things, those idols and trees and rocks and statues and things that you worship. I'm not a worshiper of those things. So this is also uh, for us, uh, not just a lesson, but it affirms for us our concept of ibadah and that we don't share with the Hindus, we don't share with the Christians, we don't share with the Jews and what they worship. We worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all of their gods. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the elephant who the Hindus uh, take as sacred, or at least some of those sects do. And the cow, Allah created the cow. Allah created the people who manufactured those idols. We don't worship them now nor in the future. We worship Allah And this is a repetition. And this affirms for us that we will not worship, uh, uh, that you will not worship that which I worship. Unless they, of course, uh, surrender their souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and embrace Islam. So of course, myself being included, I was a non-Muslim and I came to Islam. That was only from the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was through reading the Quran, the translation of the Quran in English. And I had a few Muslim associates at work who took me to the masjid and around the Muslims. And I embraced Islam. But it really wasn't through someone's da'wah. It was just from the hadaya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was my course. It was my course that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for me. From music to soul searching, as the, one of the titles of my song before, uh, one of the songs that I had written was called Soul Searching. I was soul searching, and Allah led me to Islam. Hadam min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's possible for the uh, mushrikeen and the Jews and the Christians and others, of course, to embrace Islam. Come on to the brotherhood of Islam. Then, the last ayat, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ أَلَّذِي إِبْتَدَعْتُمْ That you innovated for yourselves, لِيَنْفُسَكُمْ وَلِيْدِينِ أَلَّذِي أَنزَلُهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ So for you be your religion, which you innovated and you created, you manufactured this from your desires, from your hawa, from what your priest and rabbis told you from what your head of the temple told you. And just a lot of people, they formulate their religion, they just say, live, live, uh, live now. Because life is short. They, everybody realizes life is short and life is coming to an end. But people manufacture their deen, they manufacture their type of worship. So many people, they, they say, live fast, die young. Live fast uh, or die trying. All of these kind of uh, concepts are in fact in accordance with their hawa, their desires. So they have manufactured a type of ibadah to go with their desires instead of following the kitab or sunnah. And Allah gives us a, gives us a way and a means when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Allah gives us a purpose. The Muslim has a purpose. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who follow that purpose and worship him and him alone.